Hey everyone, welcome to the Turkey Patterning Masterclass. We are gonna give it a few minutes here. Um, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, if you look over here on, on your screen, um, your video is turned off, it's muted, so we can't hear you, we can't see you, but we would love to answer um, your questions. So uh, if there is a, there's a Q&A function uh, down at the bottom of your screen, uh, type in comments there. Uh, for the chat function, you know, if you want to chat with each other or let us know where you're from, um, be, feel free to throw that in the in the chat function. Um, we'll do, be doing a giveaway. The link will be posted here in a bit, so you'll have access to that. But um, we're super excited. We've got an awesome master class for you guys tonight with the one and only Rob Roberts. Uh, it should be uh, very interesting. I'm personally uh, very excited for it. So Again, we are going to uh, let a few more people roll in here, and then we are going to kick things off. All right, it looks like uh, a fair amount of you are, are rolling in now here. Um, again, for the people that, that are just getting on, your videos are shut, you're shut off, it's muted. Uh, we can't hear you, but be sure to use that Q&A uh, feature down at the bottom of your screen to ask us questions. We're gonna be getting around to those at the end of the webinar, but um, we'll go ahead and, and kick things off here. So, I'm Ben Bredigan with Onyx Hunt, and today we have got uh, Rob Roberts from Rob Roberts Custom Gunworks with us. Um, they are an elite partner. Uh, Rob has been around, done that. He is, knows his way. I guess we could call him the Charlie Daniels of the shotgun over here. <laughs> I don't know about so, that. <laughs> so, Rob, uh, it's great to have you on. Thank you for joining us, and we're excited to learn about patterning turkey guns. Well, I appreciate y'all letting me come out. I don't know, you know, just how well we'll go off, but uh, I hope I hope somebody can understand me. A lot of people can't even understand the way I talk, but we'll we'll do our best. I'll do my best English. Well, it's it's surprising from the northern side of the country to the southern side. I'm surprised we don't need a translator for each other, but <laughs> we should no. be good. No uh, so, Rob, give us a little bit of background about yourself and about about your company before we kick things off. Well, we we've, we've started. We've been, uh, I think, we're like 18th year of this now, and and we kind of grew up loving guns, getting crazy, shooting, hunting, hillbillies, Arkansas, all that that whole nature. Uh, and then as we got a little bit older, got some buddies together, we started shooting skeet, which led to sporting clays. And and so the real background come from the from the competition side. That's that's where we started learning how what you can do to a shotgun to make it shoot better, pattern better what's going on. And, and I was fortunate enough, not, I wasn't good enough to be one of them, but I was fortunate enough to hang around all these guys that were national champ, world's champ and stuff like that. And you start noticing the different things that uh, made them quirk to make these guns, you know, shoot. And then plus my love was always on turkeys and ducks. You know, I'm, I'm more into the uh, killing version, I guess we can say, but uh, chasing things around, but try to be nice. Um, but at that point, we were doing lots of turkey guns, and I was a guy. We started a little company back way back when, and then uh, as that went, uh, I was always on the turkey side playing with guns. Why? Why does this do this? Or why? You know, if we do this, this will work. If we take that, and then, you know, like I said, still here, it, it, it just <laughs> kept growing. And then uh, with the with the new stuff that come out, and you know, the old days, you if you could hit the pattern and put six pellets in it, it was great. Now, if you, you know, if you're not folding the paper at 70 yards, it's not doing anything. So it, it, yeah, the world's went crazy and everything's, everything's really good. That's awesome. Well, again, we're, we're proud to be elite partners with you. Um, if you want to learn more about that, um, be sure to check out the Onyx elite page um, and, and learn more about our partnership and the, the deals and discounts you have with, with Rob. So, um, but we'll kick things off. So again, like I said, uh, today we're going to be talking about patterning your turkey gun, which is obviously super critical, um, especially if you're expecting the most performance out of your gun. So, um, Rob, give us just kind of an intro. Why why should you pattern your turkey gun? Why should you pattern your gun in general? Well, if if you really you know want to kill something at the end of it, you need to hit it. 
And so um, what you find is most shotguns don't shoot straight and different people, different body styles, tall, skinny, short, stumpy, whatever the case may be, women to men, kids, whatever, the guns don't fit everybody. So when you, when you get a gun and you go out, you, you know, in the old days, it's like, I'll oh, just grab these shells and you're good to go. And that's not the case. And, and through all these years of pattern and all the, you know, the computer analysis and stuff we do, we start finding that like, there's some loads out there. You can shoot all day long and you know, it's not the gun. It's not you. It's not the choke. It's the load or, or everything's working great, but uh, you really need to practice here because you're shooting clear over here or the guns, you know, it, it's so much. And once, once we got to where we were doing all this patterning, uh, we found out that the confidence level that you'll have, once you go out and you shoot, you know where your gun's hitting and you know what patterns you're putting up, you got all the confidence in the world. I mean, you, that, it's, it's night or day. And uh, duck hunters, even for example, you know, they never did it. And once you started getting the, the duck crowd to doing it, they started noticing how much better they had got because all these years they were shooting you know, way left or way under or whatever the case may be. So yeah, patterning is very, very important. And yeah. uh, well, one side to it is you're going, as we talk, you'll find out that it's really easy too. a lot of people way over, they go way overboard about pattern a gun and it, it's really not that hard, but uh, we'll get into that as we go. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's I'm just going to say that same thing is it's, you know, well, we'll probably go into, you know, super detail about a lot of things. Like it's at the end of the day, it's, it's making sure know, knowing what your gun's going to produce at a certain distance yes you know and and like i said we we're going to show some patterns or whatever whenever this comes in um the basics of getting a gun to shoot you know what we hear a lot of times where people get on there and say you know what i've had this gun i've had it on sandbags or whatever they've got it hooked to i'm looking straight down the rib and i shoot and it's not hitting there and um, which i get that but at the same point that's not really the proper way to get your gun to shoot because you're not going to be on sandbags or somebody may be, I guess you might have a blind with all this good stuff in it, but um, this ain't a rifle, this is a shotgun. So most of the time you're better off uh, shooting these things off your shoulder and uh, getting out here and uh, putting them on big paper where you can actually see, we had, we just got back from the NWTF. Uh, we had people come to the booth. Hey, what about this pattern? Look at this pattern. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And um, it's like, well, this pattern here, you know, you, you're not hitting the paper, not correctly. Uh, we had one guy that said, uh, using one of the chokes, and uh, he was shooting like, uh, I think it was a Winchester Longbeard sixes, and he only got eight pellets in the paper. It's like, well, you could have took chokes out of it and got, you know, I mean, that's, that's not the case. You're not hitting it. And so big paper is one thing to do. I always put it on there so you can say, hey, my point impact's high, low, or whatever. So that, yep. that's yeah. So, so let's, uh, you know, just to, to break it down for people. So patterning is essentially you are uh, shooting, shooting a large piece of paper at X amount of di distance with different shell combinations, different shell combinations to see um, what you can get for, 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 for performance. Um, and for, you know, for doing that, there are really a few components that go into it. Um, uh, I think Rob, if, if, this is a great place to start. I think talking about, you know, the shell is a great, great spot to start because it kind of, right, it dictates uh, guns, chokes, et cetera. It does. So, yeah. The variations are, are unlimited nowadays. I mean, this ammo has just gotten uh, stupid good, let's say, you know, because like for the last five years, um, I've used nothing but a 20 gauge and I'm thinking about going to a 28 this year, which is, you know, I was the guy that had three and a half inch number four lead that for a hundred years and I wanted a bazooka if I could find it. I mean, it was all about the, the kill, but now what you're finding is that there's, you know, TSS for one, but all this new ammo, even the, even the stuff with, uh, you know, your mag blends and your, uh, some of this other stuff that's coming out is phen phenomenal, you know, mm -hmm. even like these long beards and stuff that shot great. Um, you, it depends on kind of what you're at, you know, and, and uh, if you're hunting blinds, a lot of people today hunt blinds and they're never going to shoot a turkey over 30 yards. Well, at that point, we're seeing a lot of our customers that are doing that. They're going down to shooting uh, sub gauge stuff. And I get it. It's they're easier to move around. They're mobile, uh, shorter. And if you're not going to shoot that distance with this stuff, they're getting good, clean kills on everything 
at, at, at these shorter distances. And then you got guys that are, you know, like we were talking about earlier, I'm, I'm still old school. I'm old and getting real slow, but I'm just like a dog chasing cars. You know, I'm still out running up and over the hill and back and forth. And, and sometimes I have to have a gun that shoots farther because I misjudge, you know, I might have thought it was 35, but I'm old and senile and actually it was 55, but I still killed him clean. And, um, so, um, that, that's a variance in the shells. I mean, and it seems like there's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, I mean, today we were shooting our signature load that, that federal puts out that were just, oh, it's just crazy. I mean, it, it was crazy. The pellet counts and stuff we're getting at 40. And, and you mentioned distance a while ago. So 40 always been the place where everybody's always uh, measured, measured things from. So I don't, I don't know why that's a set difference or distance, but that that's where it is. Now, uh, testing point of impact, uh, that's a little different thing. And so, you know, we shot variants so people could see what your patterns are, but 40 is kind of the way you go on the pattern test. So, so let's, let's back up a little bit. Um, and, and uh, on shells. So, you know, you mentioned lead, um, that, that was kind of a standard, right. For, for many, many years. Um, you know, then you got in some, some heavy blends and really now, um, TSS, so tungsten super shot is really, that's kind of taken over for a lot of turkey hunters, right? Um, do you want to go ahead and kind of explain if, if people here aren't familiar? I'm sure a lot of you are, but the merits of TSS and, and well, why. Okay, it's it's kind of the density of it. You know, it's it's kind of like guys, long range shooters with a rifle, they go to heavy bullets because you're getting more as it gets way out there. You know what I mean? You're getting more more out of it. Lead, when, when you were shooting lead, you know, it always, like, like I said, in the old days, I shot a lot of fours because lead was basically hitting, it was, it was flattening out and you were killing due to the, I mean, it was flattening out the power of the shock, the shock was killing. TSS is a little different, it's not flattening out. So in reality, if you've got four, five, six, seven, nines, you know, you're seeing a lot of nines because they still have the density and all just like the fours did, but mm -hmm. breaking bones with it, you're puncturing, you're breaking bones, you're breaking them down. And so it's swarming them when you got a whole herd of those hitting and now those nines are carrying because of the, the weight and density it's getting out there. So that's, that's one thing that changed on as far as the shot sizes. And, yeah. um, and plus, because they are so dense, uh, it's cutting and it's, I mean, it's just adding the, I mean, the length to it, the length to it. So, and when you get into sub gauges, it was hard, uh, you know, just like buckshot. Okay. You can't, you can only put so many in a 410 or a 28 gauge, you know, and it's yeah. the same thing with number fours compared to, you can fill it up with number nines, you're, you're, you're getting huge patterns. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, not, and this is not on deal, but we just a while ago shot uh, my 20 gauge out there and was playing with that new load with that new Raptor choke and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, holy smokes. I, uh, one pattern had 330 and a 10 inch at 40 yards. And that's just stupid. I mean, that's, that's crazy. You don't need that many pellets, but hey, they're great. <laughs> you know, if you're getting Exactly. So, uh, just just for reference here, I had it written down. So essentially, for example, with like lead number fours, like you were talking about, the shot count per ounce. So essentially, there's a, around 135 pellets per ounce, which is the equivalent to like a number four shot lead is the equivalent to a, about a number nine TSS. Same, same similar energies. Um, there's a 362 pellets per ounce. So, so that's, you know, three times as many pellets with the same amount of energy, right? Yeah, so like it, you were saying, sub gauges, right? Like sub gauges, man, you can now shoot a one ounce 28 gauge or a seven eighths ounce 28 gauge and have as many or more pellets as you would in a 12 gauge. They're taking tens to now doing more than we ever did 20 years ago with our 12 gauges, you know? Go ahead, I, didn't, I interrupt, I'm sorry. No, that's, that's, that's exactly right. So that's, you know, that's TSS and um, that's what you're shooting, Rob, right? That's what you're, I mean, you'd yeah. advocate. We, we've been playing for a long time with it, just, you know, even back in the experimental stages. But, um, and like I said, it's doing two different things. Lead's, lead's killing by shock, flattening out, knocking them down. This other's breaking things when it gets there. So it's, both are still successful. And, you know, and some of these guys are going out there and they say, I don't want to pay these kind of prices. Um, Get your gun shooting straight. Get it on. Get it in here. Call him in. Kill him. It's it's mm -hmm. it's uh, it's what you want. You know, it's it's not saying that that's no good and this is no good. It's it's all good. But but mm -hmm. work on it. Get what you want, and then 
you know, pattern it, get it where it needs to be and, and, and you're good. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for, for the sake of a lot of this conversation, we'll, we'll do some comparisons with lead, um, show you some lead versus um, uh, key SS comparisons here later. But, you know, in my mind, and we were talking about this before, but that dictates a lot of the things, whether, you know, you talked about gauges, sub gauges are now viable, right? Um, so let's, let's talk about, you know, the other, other aspect of, of it is, you know, the gun and the choke tube, right? Okay. Um, just explain that, that interaction between a choke tube and, and different, different shells, essentially. Um, and, and like I said, it's what we have found in the past was there was such a dramatic difference on shotguns when you had barrel lengths, you know, like, um, a lot of people in the old days when they first started got into the old bands and everything where they wanted an 18, 20 inch barrel. That was a turkey gun compared to the old 30 inch or whatever. And then what we always found that the longer the barrel, the better it patterned, you know. And then uh, it went back and forth and TSS has actually changed all that. Now you got short barrels that are still hauling the mail out there as far as you need to shoot a turkey. So we, you know, uh, this ain't about shooting them at a hundred yards. You know, this is still about call them in, kill the birds, you know, but um, it, it's made it so much easier to do that with the TSS. The lead itself is still good, but once again, you're running out of energy out there. That's what the density of the TSS and stuff is taking over. It, it's just getting out there and, and it's a swarm of bees coming. Um, but like I said, you can still use lead all day long and it depends on which way you're hunting. And if, you know, there's a lot of guys, I know guys that say, I will not kill a bird over 35 yards. Mm -hmm. um, More power to you, right? Exactly right. Good for you. Uh, I know I will. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm still chasing cars. So it's like, uh, you know, you want everything you can get, but, um, but, you know, we had, we've even had people come up to us. We had a guy, actually come up and cussed us out. He was telling us, he said, so you're the guys that said that a 20 gauge is outperforming 12 gauges. And um, one of our guys said that, and he said, well, you're crazy and run off without listening to anything on it. Well, well that, was, that was something that we learned that the 20 gauge was really taken over as far as we went out to long range, farther than you need to be shooting turkeys, and we were testing them at 75 yards with this TSS with some of the loads that we were actually developing at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we found was as we, tr we, we shot the 20 gauge versus a three inch 12 gauge versus a three and a half inch 12 gauge. And the 20 gauge was, you know, dropping six, to eight inches below uh, the circ, you know, the dot, huge paper out in a big field. And like I said, this is farther than you need to be shooting at a turkey anyway. So it, it, it really don't matter, but we just wanted to test it. And then we took the three inch 12 gauge and it was dropping 12, 15, 18 inches, you know, some 12, 15 most of the time below. And then when we went to the three and a half, it was 18, 24, sometimes hitting the dirt. So in reality, the 20 gauge was outperforming, not pellet count, not all that. It was just shooting flatter. And you see that a lot of times by shooting slugs. And it's just, uh, it, it's just the cosmetics, the dynamics of the shell. Uh, and so, you know, I always did want to clear that up, but that guy took off after he cussed us, went off and told us how stupid we was. And, you know, there was never an argument to it. But no, you're not going to have the pellet counts, but it's not, you know, it's not all about a pellet count. And that's something that, you know, I think me and you talked about before where a shot string comes into play with this stuff because pellet count, you, you might be getting 200 pellets in a 10 inch circle, and I might be getting 300, and he may be getting 400 over here, you know. It don't matter with a turkey is the one time you're shooting at a silhouette target. So when he sticks his head up and you shoot, depend on, you know, you got a shot string going through the air. And when the first pellets hits him in the head, he falls over and the rest of them go over. You, you never walk up to a turkey and say, well, I got 318 pellets in his head. I mean, <laughs> shot him more than once, more likely. But that's, that's just it. Um, it's uh, all those kind of factors like that come into play. So all the pellets, you know, once again, pellets, gun, loads, everything. Patterns is where you're killing things. Patterns where it's all going to come into play because you can have all them, but if it's not shooting where it needs to be and you're not getting a good group with it, you know, it's all for nothing. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to, I guess, not clear up, I'm sure a lot of you people on, on the call know, but there, there might not be some that know as well. You know, a lot of the times, you know, 12 gauge versus 20 gauge, versus 410 versus whatever like one a lot of the times you know one ounce of shot 
at the same speed, you know, just because you're shooting it out of a 12 gauge doesn't mean it's going to kill it any deader than out of a 410 or a 20 gauge, right? Sure. So people get, can get hung up on that, um, you know, just because it's, you know, essentially that gauge is just the bore diameter, right? Well, and, you know, just uh, you see that more on the waterfowl side where they really get into the speed factors and mm -hmm. it's like speed kills, which it does. There, there's no doubt about it. But patterns are going to kill more because if you can have all the speed in the world, but if you ain't hit it, it's, you know, it's not doing you good. Yeah. Um, so so let, let's we'll, we'll talk a little bit about choke tubes. You know, um, we could get into the, uh, the the argument or discussion about constrictions all day long, but well, um it's right. It's essentially about finding the one that works best with your gun. So give me your, 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 your spiel on, on finding the right one for your gun without spending the, you know, giving away the farm. I get it. Well, when we first started, just like we did the triple threat series, the T1, T2, T3, um, that's more of all of your flying, your ducks, your dove, your quail, whatever. Um, we did that to the point where uh, we would take these guns and we would find exactly which these guns really loved. And we based the constrictions off that so they could shoot steel or, or lead. Um, you know, used to be, you'd go get factory type chokes and this was an IC for steel or this was an IC, but you can't use this for that. Or you can't use this for this and that. And it's like, no, we, we ended that. It's like, no, we're going to give this, we're going to take out of their mind that they're worried about whether it's an IC or it's this, this is the patterns. This is where it's going to go. And this is, this is where it's being proven. So certain guns like a Benelli, uh, when you're shooting ducks and stuff like that, that, that T2 choke that we come out with is what that gun loves more than anything. I mean, I, uh, I'll take, I'll go goose hunting with it. I'll go with it and I'll, I'll keep that same choke on stuff. Okay. Well, take the waterfowl out and now you bring the turkeys in. So it was, it was better. You know, we used to start off where we did everything like on a 12 gauge from 640 to 675 and every 5,000 increments, we'd match them up and we'd do this. Well, through all these years of pattern testing, and we pattern test lots of guns, and we and we have. So, um, it's uh, we start finding out there's absolutely no need for these constrictions out of our chokes. Now, Joe Joe's chokes over here that he does whatever, and that he, I'm not talking for them. I'm just talking about ours, and I'm not a bigger better. We just found that, like in our chokes that you know one or two of the turkey chokes is where you need to be. And it used to be, like I said, it used to be because of barrel length. Uh, for example, if you had a, a Benelli with a 24 inch, um, it wanted 655, but if you if you had one with a 28 inch, it liked a 660. And so that's that's where we were hung on that. You get over here on the same thing on the Browning side, you know, with a bigger board, well, that some of those would come down to around a 660 or they'd jump all the way to a 675. And um, when we come out with this new Raptor choke that we come up, we actually, this choke is coming out in a constriction that we never sold for nothing, but by the cuts and everything we're doing inside the choke and shooting all these different loads, the, you know, I mean, we shoot everything from Federal Heavy, Apex, Winchester, it, it don't matter, we're shooting all these guys stuff and, and it's performing great with all of it. And uh, and so uh, that that's where we come. So we actually have started to find the one size fits all due to this new choke with a new cut on the inside. So we're kind of excited about that because we're not having to, uh, we'd already went to where we was down to one or two sizes anyway, because that was the main thing. Now we're just doing what we're finding that works best in those particular guns. Awesome. That makes um, sense. Yeah, exactly. It simplifies because, uh, you know, your head starts spinning when you talk about, you know, different guns and they're the different size, you know, it's just, you know, because you're comparing Mossberg to Benelli to Beretta to Browning, and they're all different, right? So it, yeah. it can make your head spin. And then you talk about gauges, and it really goes to hell. Well, and, and you you know, let a guy worry about where the birds are. Let him worry about where them ducks are, this and that. Let's, we, what we want to do is we want to take that worry out of you on the gun. When you get there, we, we want it working. So, so they uh, work it too. Because, you know, I, and I learned that from sporting plays. You, you'd go up to a station, there'd be a guy sitting up there, and he'd be, looking at the target and he'd be unscrewing this choke and then he'd screw that choke and then he'd screw this one in and pretty soon you just want to just you know and then then you watch somebody that's a world's champion walk up there and he's shooting fixed chokes in his barrel because he knows what that gun does with that at it as where it's at and he's you know he'd be the world's champion so that's uh 
that was that mind thing. It's like, all right, let's get the, let's narrow it down for the folks where they go out and we get them where they need to be and let them worry about more about where these turkeys are at or where they're roosting or, or whatever the case may be. That's, that's, that's what we're trying to be here for. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's great. Um, great transition into patterning. Let's, let's go to the range and let's, you know, let's start off with, you know, what, what do you need to be able to pattern a shotgun? You were saying it was super easy. It, it really is. And a lot of times, um, like I said, a lot of, a lot of folks go out there and you don't have to go out there just to get beat up. Uh, what I do, um, you know, I took like a personal gun of mine and we kind of went through a sequence with some guys today. And I just took, I took, uh, my gun out there and said, all right, look here, you know, never shot with turkey chokes or nothing like that. Let's, let's take this gun out here. The, the first thing I want to do is put a tight choke in it. I, I was using a turkey choke, but for example, to check your point of impact, um, 27 is where I like to say it's at 27 yards, which don't, you know, don't have to measure this. Just step off somewhere between 25 and 30, just step it off, put up a big sheet of paper, uh, put your dot the size of a skull can somewhere in the middle of it, big sheet, like four by four, something like that, cardboard, uh, neighbor's house, whatever, you know, their car, whatever you need to do, but get you a spot like that where you can see where you're hitting. And then what I like to do is I'll step back and I'll take uh, three shelves, dove loads, skeet loads, whatever the case may be. And I'll put in, I like to pull up, boom, shoot it, you know, drop your gun down, pull up again, shoot it, same target and do that three times. And at that three times, because you are using a tight choke, whether it be a full or your turkey choke or whatever, I, I did it with a turkey choke because I really want to see where the point of impact is with this gun with it and walk up there and you're going to see just a big clump of where, where your shot's at. Well, there, there's your point of impact. That's what it is. You're shooting it off the shoulder. Um, like, like with the turkey, you can close one eye if you want to. All Everything else you do with the shotgun, leave both of them open. But I, I, I can see where a turkey's actually probably the only thing you ever aim at. And so uh, even with that, you can pull up and, and do it that way. That's going to give you the very noticeable about it. And if you're a shaky guy or whatever, get grab some sticks or something. But as far as putting them in the sleds or, you know, sandbagging them down and really trying to get it, don't do that because you're not really, uh, especially with those light loads, shoot it so you know where it's going to shoot when you're out in the field. That, that, that's what's going to happen. When you're out there is when it's going to come into play. Uh, that's just the, the first side on, I'm finding the pointy impacts. What, yeah, know, and then what, yeah, and what that is, is, is that is essentially, I mean, number of things. So you're not burning up expensive shells uh, at right. 40 yards. And all of a sudden it's, it's, you know, two feet off to the left or two feet off to the right. And you're like, huh? So this will solve a lot of that and say, you know, here's the center of the center of your, you know, the mark on your target. And all of a sudden your patterns over here, that's indicating that you have a point of impact problem, whether that's the gun, whether that's how you're holding it. Right. Yeah. And, right. and like I said, if you walk up there and you're shooting 14 inches higher or lower or something like that, then you can correct this problem before you spend you know, the, the price of shells. That's another thing that comes with all these new new shells is that price tag. So at that point, uh, take that out to get going. Now Now that you're settled, that you feel confident that this gun's shooting where you want, now back up, you know, back up, tighten it down. If you're the guy that's gonna try all these different shells, that's fine. I mean, that's that's why we, we do so many pattern tests because people comes in, it's like, look, I don't wanna spend a thousand dollars in shells just to find out which one's shooting. And so, um, but, you know, if, if your buddy tells you, hey, you need to use this particular load over here, it's really great. I've had great success with it and blah, blah, blah. Well, they're probably right. I mean, they're, they're probably sitting in the right spot. And then at that point, now let's move it back to 40. And now you can, like I said, sit down. Um, you still need to shoot at least once off the shoulder, see where, you know, kneel down, shoot it off your knees, something to that effect. But don't cinch it down. Don't, don't cinch your guns down. At least shoot them off somewhat of that and uh, see where you're hitting for your point of impact but that's where your pattern now now you're going to deal with your patterns now you get back at 40 now you start worrying about your patterns and 40 is kind of that is kind of the standard that's what a lot of patterns you know when you hear people talking about patterning it's it's um you know 40 yards is a is a big like a standard distance right it is and what what you're happening and the reason why everybody still does that is because now you're kind of comparing apples to apples because if you talk to uh, your old buddy down here, you, you got a buddy in Florida compared to one in California, one in Minnesota, you know, it's like, well, what'd you do? Well, I stuck it up 40 yards and I shot that, you know? And so it's, it's just kind of a standard. And that lets you kind of, uh, well, I was getting 
200 pellets and this one like, well, I only got 170 and this one goes, I only got 120. Well, that 120 probably had a problem if you're all using the same loads. Yeah. And, and but the big sheet of paper is very important because like I said, the most of the time we have people walk up and they'll have a notebook sheet of paper and they'll, you know, here, here's what I got. And it's like, man, you're not hitting the pattern. And you don't want to go, that's what it is, but you got all these pellets up there, but you're not hitting the paper. I mean, you, they're like, oh, I ain't right at it. Well, I don't mean nothing. I mean, uh, it's not necessarily your fault. You know, a lot of times, it, you know, it could be gun fault here, or it could be point of impact issue. It could be a choke issue. It could be, you know, you, you, a lot of things can come into play. And and what that big sheet of paper is telling you, you know, versus one of those, those like eight and a half by 11 shoot and see targets. Yeah, you can see that you got, you know, eight pellets in the head and neck of a turkey, but by opening that up, right, you can really see, well, wow, yeah, I hit the turkey, but 90% of my load was up, you know. That's it. And, and if you like, to take that on it, you know, take mm -hmm. that on the side of your neighbor's house when you shoot his house to see where you're shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're, so you got this, this big four by four sheet of cardboard or whatever. Are you just putting a dot in the middle and then That's backing up? Yes. Yeah. In, in our situation, we we're you know we kind of got all the comp computer part which does all the 10, 20, 30 inch circles and stuff for us. But at, at that same thing, you can go in and uh, a lot of people when it comes to pattern, uh, once you get to point of impact, a lot of people go out there and they'll shoot at a blank sheet of paper. And and when they get done, they'll go to where the pattern's at. You know, okay, here's your pattern. They'll take uh, like a string, 10 inch string or 12 inch, whatever whatever you want to see hook a marker on one end, hit it to the middle and just make you a circle around it and then count your pellets. That's actually the way to do your pattern. Um, I like to see it that first off I'm shooting straight and then they're inside that circle. But let's, you know, like I said, if you don't have that, the correct way is actually shoot it on a blank sheet of paper as far as that goes and then go up and look for the center of the pattern. And then, like I said, just like you got a set of caliper, you know, just make you a circle around with a string and then go yep. to count, and you know, and that's that's going to bring your pattern. Um, that's like I said, once you got your point of impact word fixed, it's shooting straight. There you go. And uh, same thing, a lot of people are you know went to sides, red dots, and all this kind of stuff, which is all great. Um, when you do, same thing. Don't use those high dollar shells right off. Finish with that. Use use your other shells. I know the ammo manufacturers don't appreciate me saying all that, but. Uh, Use your other stuff to get sided, you know, get in close and then finish it off and save your good stuff for, for hunting. And, yeah. But that's, so, that, that's kind of the simple way of doing it. it. You know, it's not a big ordeal. It's, uh, um, that works, you know, right there. So, so it's taking that and, and, and breaking it down further. So we can go ahead and, um, you know, when you're, you've got your 10 inch circle, that's again, 40 yards, 10 inch circle. That's, that's pretty standard for comparing loads together, turkey loads, at least, um, you know, to, to do that, it's, you know, if you have cardboard, right, you flip it over and just go ahead and mark off all the, 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 the pellets and tone them, right? Yeah. And, and yeah, flip it over, like you said, cause it's usually easier to count them on the backside and just take a marker and hit all your dots and yeah. uh, you can go from there. And, and don't get caught up, you know, there's a lot of folks, of course, this whole wave has changed because, you know, 20 years ago, it was about how many pellets, how many pellets. It's not so much how many pellets, it's more, you're still, it's all about this pattern. Um, the, uh, you can have all the pellets in, you know, I, I used to, they always had these competition, these turkey competitions where they'd go out and shoot at three inch circles and stuff like that. Well, that's not the gun you want to turkey hunt with. I mean, I want to see you know, 20 inch circle that's absolutely covered. All the pellets are inside that more or less than a 10 or a three or a six. You put it into that right there because when that turkey moves around and that like they do, you'll see one by the time you pull the trigger, he does this, you still kill it. And mm -hmm. so that's, that, uh, like I said, once again, it's all about patterns. It's, uh, you gotta have those. Yeah, so let's, uh, we'll, we're, I'm gonna pull up and share here. Um, what we're going to look at first is we're going to look at a, uh, you know, this is, this is just standard lead at 40 yards out of a, I think this is out of a factory, factory full probably. That's going to show up. And this is that you're saying, this is your computer analyzed shot. So kind of describe what you're seeing. This is the, again, factory chokes out of uh, 
out of what are these number five or number four lead shells? Uh, that's an oh, that's an, yeah, that's a number five. Uh, yep. Oh, great. Yep. I got it. Let me see what that looks like. Um, yeah. So you notice your pellet counts um, on that, and that's just a factory choke, and it uh, sixty-two and a ten inch. And, 220. I don't really yeah. care about the rest of them. I, I like that. I like that 10 and 20 inch because that's a core. That's what you're, you know, if you're shooting targets, you know, that's fine. But as far as a kill power and everything else, you need these pellets to get more. Um, you need to bring them in. And so, yeah, that's just a factory choke there. So it's, it's pretty much wide open. Yeah. And so, you know, what this was, this was probably, I mean, this was a good pattern back 15, 20 years, right? I mean, it was a, yeah. it was a good pattern, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I, you're right. Yeah, so. Fortunately, I'm old enough to remember when it was. That's right. Yeah, so now we're going to look at 40 yards with TSS out of a, a Raptor choke tube. So these are number nines. And again, this is a testament if you're not shooting TSS, um, you know, just, just give it a look, right? Um, yeah. So what do we got on this pattern here, Rob? Yeah, well, you see, you see how it's all came back into play. So now that you're actually uh, on those circles, that inner circle you're looking at is 20 inch. The outer circle is 30. And then what you're looking at the middle is your, uh, the little X is where the red dot is that you're aiming in the, in the square box is the point of impact. Or, yeah, that's the point of impact, the, the little square inside there. So that gun's shooting dead nuts right there. He, it's on. And you can see now you're always going to have some strays here and there, and you'll see some over here on the, on the left, a couple of those are just bounce back or, you know, yeah, or on the far right. Those really aren't pellets out of those. Those may be bouncing off something inside that machine that comes in. But you're going to see for the most part of that, that right there, um, everything's way inside the 20 inch. Uh, that's, uh, that's got a good core. Anything that that turkey, basically, if he sticks his head in, a, we always called it a, at one time, we had a turkey factor thing that, that when we would look at them, if a turkey, we figured out how many times you could put a head and vertebrae inside a 15 inch circle because everybody else was counting 10s, 20s, 30s. So we haven't been doing that as of lately, but uh, we figured out how many, if you stack the turkey's brain and vertebrae inside there and you come up with those like 171 different ways that you could stack it in there. So we had, a, if he stuck his head in that circle, how many ways could he get out of that pattern? And uh, it was really cool, and like I said, we hadn't done that lately because right there's right there's proof. If if a, if a bird sticks his head anywhere inside, pretty much that twenty inch circle, he's not he's not coming out of that. And uh, so that's the patterns that kills. Because like I said, that when you by the time you pull the trigger on it on a bird at forty yards, uh, it's nothing. I mean, they can very well stop, turn, do that little snake move, and but you still killed him. And, yeah. and so that's. Yeah, that's actually a good pattern right there. I mean, yeah, I think it is. That's yeah. I, I would take that. I I take that every day of the week. Um, so, you know, we talked about patterning at forty. Um, do you, you know, if if you're you're going out turkey hunting, would you look at what your pattern does at at say like twenty yards and at fifty yards, or is that something worth worth doing? I do. I I personally do. I, I take my stuff out there, and yes, I I take them as far as fifty and sixty yards just to see. So if I if I mess up or whatever the case may be, that that uh, sorry about that, um, that that I could actually um, I'm still killing. Uh, twenty yards is important. You're wasting a shell, but I think you've got one of them patterns on there shot at twenty, and it's like throwing a baseball thread. It's better be on up close you know uh that, yeah 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 that's that, was that same gun and everything at 20 yards and and like those numbers up there is not going to be real because it just actually blew a hole out of it i mean it's yeah there there was <laughs> there were so many out of that and that's uh that's probably well you can see it in comparison to that 20 inch circle that's probably about six inches around and uh and yeah i mean I know it sounds bad, but sometimes you have to body shoot one, you know, and uh, well, that'll definitely do the job if it's up close. That's that's actually one time where your point of impact is is 100%. You better have it. And then uh, that is also one of the times where a lot of the guys have went to red dots and stuff like that because they are getting their birds in close. And so 
they're taking all the guests out of that. They know no matter what they do, if the gun's on the shoulder, not on the shoulder, wherever it is, they get the red dot on it, boom, you know, it, it happens. So, so that's, that's a good plus. And, and one thing to consider um, that I always like to think about is, is, you know, let's just say you're new to turkey hunting and, and you're not comfortable taking those 50, 60, whatever yard, or, or you just want to kill your birds up close, right? Um, it, it seems that as we've progressed, you know, in, in, in this area that it's tighter and longer, but by doing that, you're giving up shorter, you know, you're giving up a lot of that close range where you have to be, you have to be aiming perfectly versus having a little bit more room for air at 20 yards. Right. Right. And I'm, I'm always one of those that, uh, you know, when I, when I was first getting into turkey hunting, if you missed a few too, cause a lot of people still today aim at their heads, shoot that little bow tie and you're, you're usually in the goods there. Every once in a while you might mess up a beard here and there, but it's, I'd rather mess up a beard and then watch one fly all crippled. But uh, yeah. yeah, go for the bow tie and then you got it. You got him whipped. So, you know, outside of, you know, what, what, if you're doing it, if you're doing it at home, you just want to see what it's doing at that distance. Like we talked about, you know, bad, you can imagine a head or a neck of a turkey in there and make sure that that joker can't get out of there. Right. That's it. That's it. And it, oh. and it never does hurt because a lot of people don't realize just like I said, man, I missed him and he was right in my face. That's usually the one you're going to miss 40 <laughs> yards with this new stuff, 40 yards, 30 and 40 yards is your shot. I mean, that's your, that's your good pattern. That's your good kill pattern, everything else. Cause yeah, you're either having full decapitation or missing completely a lot of times when they're that close. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of people here that, you know, it looks like they, they geek out on this stuff. So it's like, do you, do you go into the detail of looking at, um, you know, pattern density efficiencies, that kind of thing as well. You know, how many, how many, what percentage of the payload is within attendance circle, et cetera. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We uh, are like when we do our pattern analysis and stuff on guns, what we, what we try to do compared to what load, whose load, this load, we, you know, we don't just go one here because this one, we, we try all these different loads. And a lot of times a customer tells us what they want. Hey, you know, I want to shoot nothing but this. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then that's what we're going to do. And we can, we can play and try to tune it. But for the most part, uh, most customers goes, look, I'm going to be hunting this. I want, I want the absolute poison. I want the best this gun will do. And then that's what we do. So we'll go in there and we'll count uh, if this load's got, let's, I'm just using numbers here. This, this load's got 400 pellets in it. And so we, we take that, we put that into it. So when we get done, there's, this is how many pellets is in a 10 inch, 20 inch, 30 inch. Here's your point of impact. Here's a percentage of the load choke combination. So you're getting, you know, 98% or you're getting uh, blah, blah, blah. TSS makes that a little tough because the little pellets and sometimes when, you know, at 40 yards, you're still duplicating the holes. You're, you're ripping holes. So it may come up on the computer screen as one hole when reality three ripped it, you know. And so you mm -hmm. run into some of them. But for the most part, yes. And when you take this from Turkey um, it's probably more so important when you get into the waterfowl type stuff, when you're using a larger shot and you go, well, um, you see a guy that's getting 98% on, on a waterfowl choke. Uh, he's probably missing a lot of ducks. You, know, <laughs> you can get them in, you know, where we want them all real super tight and everything for Turkey on waterfowl. You won't, you know, you still want it out here. So, um, the big percentage is good, but like I said, you don't want to overkill. It depends on what you're doing, but now we're talking Turkey. So yeah, we, we want it. We want a hundred percent or, you know, we want to kick all, we want all of it, you know, and then that's what, that's what we strive for. You're not always going to get all of them, but that's what you're striving for. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll go on, we can go into questions here, but uh, anything that, uh, anything else that you think will help people out there when they're patterning their guns? Well, and I, like I said, I think that's, that's a lot of, a lot of it to it is, uh, get used to the gun, get one that fits. If you, if you get a situation where you're having a, uh, um, you know, and some people, some guns just don't fit, them. you know, and they come in and we, we've had guys that are good guys or this or that. And they come in and it's like, Hey, look, and they're shooting way off the board. Um, give us a holler. I mean, it, it's one of those things. There's some things we can do. It might be something that there's nothing you can do. Hey, you, you might need to swap over to something different. 
Uh, the beauty part about turkeys and stuff is if you do have a point of impact problem anymore, there's so many things from adjustable sides to, to scopes to red dots to, you know, there's a cure for all these type things. And, and, you know, we tell people there's, there's, you know, so many, but that's Turkey, you know, when you get to ducks and all that, then we need to work on a little bit, but your point of impact is not as noticeable when you're shooting the more open chokes. So it's, uh, it's one of them things, but like I said, we're on turkeys right here. That's, I'd say you bear down on that point of impact. And as far as patterning these guns, it's getting easier because, um, the guns are better, you know, guns are getting better. The the chokes are getting better and uh, the loads are getting better. So that's, that's huge compared to, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Rob's heading to the Turkey woods this spring. What, what do you have? There's a lot of people asking, you know, what's your personal setup? What does that look like? Um, I'm still, yeah, I'm still old school and I just swapped to one of the Raptors. And uh, like I said, that, that was a new one. Um, I'm shooting, um, I'm different. I've, I've played with every configuration. Now I've just jumped down to a gun that I've gotten really, had really great success with. When I first started uh, experimenting with a 20 gauge a little bit, I was actually shooting an M2 Benelli 20 gauge with a 28 inch barrel, which was basically a dove gun or a duck gun. Well, uh, it's turned into a monster. So that is actually the, I've, now, all I have on the front end of it, as far as sights, uh, is just a front. I've got a high-vis comp sight, which is like a sporting clay sh- sight on the front. Uh, the gun shoots straight. Um, that's it. I mean, of course, you got all the work and all that stuff, and this gun has been beaten bang, and I've, and I've actually I've, I've killed a lot with it, and, it's, uh, and I hunt lots of states. I would say I killed them all here in Arkansas, but we don't have that many here anymore. For you know, Hopefully, we're, we're getting a good hatch. But... Um, now hunting around, and that's what I've, I've just fell in love with that gun. So I haven't, you know, uh, I've, I've just stuck with it because it's, you know, it's it's old lucky at this point, you know. And what what are you shooting for load wise? Uh, well, I've, I've shot a little bit. I used to make a lot of my own. We we've shot it, but uh, when Federal come out with this, uh, you know, come to us and want to do this Rob Robert Signature Series load, and and kind of took our specs and went in and do it. That's that's what I'm using. You know, and I know there's plenty of good loads out there, but this one, this one's poison and it's got our name on it. And it's like, uh, I really like it, you know, but yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a great load. And that's, uh, that's what I'm shooting. And, and, you know, and I've got buddies, I've got buddies at Apex. I've got buddies, at, you know, at Winchester shooting all these different ones. And so uh, it's kind of what, you know, it's kind of where, where you want to go with this stuff. And, uh, but I do recommend, uh, I do, I do recommend going with this, this harder stuff, unless you're just shooting everything 30 yards and in, but, and but then, you can kill it with lead. There's no problem killing them. You know I mean? It, it, it all works. And you're shooting, you're shooting uh, number nines then? Yes, I am shooting straight nines. And uh, like I said, we went out and experimented and done things that probably shouldn't be. We, we wanted to see if you shot one out there at 70 yards, uh, what happened? Well, we mm-hmm. were killing it. It was like, wow. We don't, we're not telling you to do that. We're not recommending, but it was like, holy smokes, this is, this is unbelievable. Um, which is, which is a great thing because now you have basically taken these guns into where we used to be like, man, if you can get 40 yards on now, you're getting 60 yards all day long. I mean, that's, that's clean kills at 60 yards. We still bring them in. And I'm afraid at a certain point, the way this is going, you're going to start shooting guys in the field next door, or shooting a farmer off his tractor at 200 with them, you know? But uh, the, the, and that's just joking. The, uh, the thing about it is, is uh, they're just good clean kills. And, and when you got birds into the 30, 40 yard range, that's where you really want them. That's where you're getting to watch the show. You're getting the whole thing. And usually that's, that's your good kill. That's where your pattern's the best. That's, that's where you need to be. Yeah. And, and you know, we it's all, it's happened to a lot of us, right? They, you know, where 15 years ago, they hang up at 50, 55 yards. It's like, oh, they're right at the edge where it's like, I've done it, but I've also not done it. Right. And now with TSS, you know, that, it, you know, it's, it's going to be a more practical shot. It, it, it has. And, it, and it's like I said, and it's clean kills. It's not just throwing it out there. It, yeah. You know, clean kills with it. And so it's, it's, it's really good stuff. It's, it's uh, amazing what all is going on. And, and like I said, it's, it's, you go in, you can still take some of the other, you, the, your copper plated, 
your mag blend, all your heavy shots, still great stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of stuff, and I know them guys have even come out with the TSS loads themselves. And so, uh, yeah, that stuff's shooting great. And uh, and and what we've been tickled about is we've actually put this choke tube together, and we go out and shoot from here to here to here to here, and it's uh, <laughs> it's doing great. So we're super excited about that. You know, it's uh, like uh, you don't have to. You can shoot all of it if you need to. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, one another question I had for you was, um, you know, when you're getting into the performance side of shotguns, um, you know, what are some things you can, you know, do to your gun in order to make it perform better, throw better patterns, etc. Oh, uh, one of the one of the major things, especially like some of the companies now, like Browning, some of them's already taken the, you know, the forcing cones out of them. Uh, that's something that that has been great. You know, you'll hear one. You know, Explain forcing cone explain that concept for people that you, if you take your barrel off the gun and look down it from the receiving end you'll you'll see right past the chamber it'll look like an o-ring in there it's not an o-ring but that that's what it'll that's the appearance you're going to see um what it does in the older days um 100 years ago in some of your european markets still are in are still into that so uh whether you're using cardboard paper wads all this kind of stuff you know here everything around here is all plastic wads now but it used to help form it before, you know, it, it taken and it form it before it went down your bore and everything. So what we did was we're finding that we, it was been more by taking it out, by reaming it out, uh, you're taking some of the back pressure off your shoulder. So you're going to have felt recoil difference on your shoulder and it's pushing it out the other end. And what we started seeing is there was no deflection off any of your shot and stuff out there. It started bringing those strays back into the pattern and, uh, it, it is one thing that I'm telling you, if you got them in your gun, take them out. I mean, we've taken them out of $100,000 Craig offs, you know what I mean, that, that people come in. That, that, that is the one thing, you know, once again, you're in the European market. And we, we're thankful they are because it's, you know, part of our business. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a def, it definitely allows your board to take over and your choke tube to do its thing. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's that's first thing that I would do. I mean, that's, that's probably the most cheapest also. It's one of the cheaper, most important things you can do. Um, and then, you know, from, from there, are you, uh, you know, talking about whether it's, it's polishing, um, other, other things that you do to, to help improve? Yeah. You know, it used to be they, a lot of people wanted their bores polished and stuff like that, which is not really, most guns today come with your chrome line barrels and everything like that, which, uh, you know, that was one of the things that took away from backboring. You used to backbore these barrels where you'd cut it all out and then you'd have to polish it all back. But um, it, it, it's, there's good and bad, and that's, that's for a different discussion. But um, most of your barrels now don't need it because they're chrome lined, so they're already pretty slick. So once you go through and you, you clean that forcing cone up there, it's giving you a straight shot, letting your choke tube take over on the other end. Yeah. So it, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've noticed a, a number of questions coming through here about backborn. What's what's your your two cents on that? Backborn was great. One of the things you know used to it, you know, from our standpoint, when we would take a gun and backboard, then you have to change all your choke tube designs. Um, it was uh, it was uh, a, a major player, and we won't mention names. They're they're a major player in the deal. And a guy that owned the company would send a gun in, and we would do like backboard and do the forcing cones, port it, send him back, and he'd use a choke, and he blew the gun up. So here's where it comes in. If you don't if you don't keep the idea that you backboard it, then there you go. So we did it a second time, and he blew it up again. Well, third time, called and said, hey, look, you know, we give you a barrel this last time, but just out of the thing, I said, what choke you use? And he said, well, our choke. And I said, I get it. I'm not knocking your choke. What bore diameter choke are you using it? Well, it was in, it was a 721. Well, we backboard his gun to 735. So basically it was catching the water and blowed the end of it out. Mm. And so he was using the wrong side. So in order, if you were going to backboard the gun, you know, actually backboard, um, you got to have the full set of chokes that go with it. And so the reason we stayed away from backboarding them anymore was because uh, like I could backboard your gun you got sick of that gun. You trade it to your buddy. Your buddy give traded it to somebody else, or whatever the case may be. And that guy gets it. He don't have a clue. He just puts in a normal choke. He blows it up. And then guess what? It was Rob's fault. It'll all come back. It's, it's kind of like my wife on that. It's always Rob's fault. And so, 
it um so we 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 don't do it anymore but now as far as the, the question the guy asking or whatever uh, a lot of times you got overboard guns okay like for instance a benelli compared to a browning or a winchester or a mossberg 835 those the you know those guns are overboard they they do it from the factory they didn't backboard they just build it at a bigger board so it's it's an overboard and so the difference between that um uh, and a small bore um basically goes back to your shot string you're getting more pellets on impact you know i mean as far as hitting at one time with the large bore so you can argue it back and forth uh especially on flying objects you know like a skeet shooter and trap shooter trap shooters would use a big bore because they wanted more pellets to hit that target that's going straight away they want them all to get up there where a skeet shooter didn't want them overboard. They wanted the long shot string in case all oh, they had to make sure they was in front of the targets because it's going left and right at it. You know, the, the tail hit. So, you know, that, that, that's an argument that uh, it's good. It's good. It's bad. You know, it, there's nothing bad with any of these type things to do as long as uh, that's what you're after. As long as you know what's going on, then if that's what you're after, then do it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, that, that, that's great insight. Great insight. I'm sure it answered a number of people's questions I've been getting here, but we'll just kick it, kick it full, full time questions right now. Um, so one question that I saw pop up uh, a number of time was uh, a lot of people were saying I have point of impact issues, whether they're using a just a, you know, a straight bead or a red dot or some sort of site with both of those. What can you do to potentially correct that? Well, some things there are, and you know, when most of the time, if you put a red dot or something on, you've corrected it at that point, but there's a lot of guys that goes out there and goes, you know, Hat, I want that on my gun. I want my gun to shoot straight. Um, I had a gun one time that absolutely drove me crazy and I, I'm looking down it and it's like, I, I can't figure it out. It, it's crazy. Well, later on, it took and another buddy of mine went up and he goes, well, first off the ribs crooked. And I mean, it was a factory, it was a new gun. And, uh, Oh, it's terrible. The, the rib is completely off, or you might have mid beads, which I don't like. I usually knock them off, but sometimes they'll get it. If you've got a gun that's literally, um, you know, like bending barrels, you've seen them back in the day. I think we, we talked about that, you know, earlier about, you know, you have a buddy take his barrel and bend it on the bumper of his truck or whatever the case may be. But we had barrel benders. We would take in, we'd move this point of impact and stuff like that. And what we found was that don't work. Uh, first off, once they go, if they go shoot a lot of ski, heat the barrel up, dove hunt, whatever the case may be, you start noticing it's like memory on a water hose. It comes back. And plus, if you bend, like if your point of impact's up or down and you start trying to bend the barrel to do that, you bust your ribs loose or you're looking down now, all of a sudden you can't even see the front side because it's down below the hump or you've got, you know, or you're, looks like a snow, you know, ski ramp yeah. going. Um, that, that's a tough one. I mean, that really is tough to get it. Some, some folks can do it with shims. Um, I had a Benelli a million years ago was the first one, which we're going to do a, a segment on. It was an old Montefeltro M1. It was one of the H and K designs. And this thing has been through, um, we're, we're going to show it a deal. I had a situation where I couldn't get this thing to shoot where I needed to do. And I started playing with the shims to the point where I would take, uh, back then they used numbers, 50, 55, 60, 65, which now it's A, B, C, D type. But in, in reality, I had to drop the stock. You drop the stock, you drop the point of impact. I know it don't sound right, but that's, that's what you're doing. And so I needed more drop than what the C was doing. So I took the A and the C and marked it and then went down below it and drilled my own hole and I actually cured it. I put it offset and drilled my shims and got it over and I straightened that gun by that. But not everybody's that lucky. And sometimes uh, uh, point of impact is more into the stock. Uh, there's a couple things and, and really true that there's so many different, there's so many different ways. Uh, feel free to pick up the phone hard one of our guys, you know, uh, and say, yeah, that's way off. Well, we got issues or let, let's try that. Yeah, that's 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 a great point. Yeah, that that's a tough one because every everybody's uh, point of impact issue may be different. Yeah, and that's a great point because um, another question we got here is, you know, uh, somebody's saying that I can't, you know, I can't get this certain gun to throw a pattern. Where his friend, you know, the question is, my friend's got the same gun and his is great. 
explain some of the dynamics between the gun choke shell and, and why they're getting such different results. Uh, we, we, we do see that. Uh, you know, and you will see that just, uh, we've taken guns with identical bore diameters, uh, same length barrel, same everything, and get different results. Using the same choke, take choke out of one, put it in the other, and you still get, you know, it, it's crazy. But sometimes um, this may come into the force and cone area. Uh, a lot of times that's one of those things you can clean up. Uh, there may be, there may be a stickler on it. It may be um, when when you're getting, you know, I, we covered that earlier where they was talking about somebody get 160 pellets and this guy gets 172. Uh, um, that's not really a big deal. That may just been the shell that came out at the time or make sure that point impact, go back to that point impact. But um, if it is, if it is like that um, and you haven't done like force and cone work and cleaned up the inside of the bore on it, um, shout. I mean, cause I mean, that's, that's, that's one thing right there. Yeah. Um, good. Very, very good insight. Uh, another thing is lots of, uh, lots of three inch versus three and a half inch uh, questions on here. What's, what's your perspective on, especially it looks like it's a lot of TSS three and a half versus three inch. Well, and it's kind of like the waterfowl thing too. Cause you know, like I said, I grew up, I wanted three and a half. I wanted to shoot a bazooka. I wanted, you know, the only reason I didn't use a four inch cause I didn't make one at the time. I wanted all of it. And so we, we have done now as this ammo has changed, you know, 10 years ago, that's not the case. Cause like, uh, for instance, you know, Magblend was when that first, that five, six, seven load of Magblend was a great load and we'd go out and I'd always shoot to the three and a half over the three inch. And that, that's the way it was going to be. It was blah, 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 blah. Well, as the time has come on, what we're, what we're starting to find out is that, um, uh, uh, you know, especially on the waterfowl side, we, we would take, uh, let's pick on federal. Uh, we took a three inch black cloud, three and a half inch black cloud number twos against three inch black cloud twos and shoot them. And what we were finding that in reality, uh, your 10 and 20, your cores were ever bit as good with the three inch. You weren't getting as many pellets, of course. And, and you were, you know, had some other stuff off, but the core was ever bit as good and less recoil, which means if you're not getting beat up, you're more apt. Uh, especially in the waterfowl world. I mean, you, you only want to get beat up so long. And yeah, you, uh, turkey, the same thing. you bust, uh, when you go in on a turkey and you take one and it tears your head off and I've had it uh, more than one occasion. I've, you know, I've, I've shot a turkey and then after my eyes quit watering, the blood quit running. I looked up and seen feathers and knew I got him, you know, and it, and, and those days, those days is gone because of the performance of the ammo. And so, Used to be, I'd say, yeah, you definitely want three and a half. Now I'd say, uh, don't. There's no sense to take the beating. There, there's not. And uh, just, just like what we talked about earlier, even at the 75 yard range, um, even with the TSS at that far, we're finding that the three inch was outperforming, not pellet count, but by not falling out of sight either. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not shooting three and a half anymore. I'm too old. <laughs> I've yeah, got my still are going, I'm shooting, but you know, I would, I would uh, definitely tend to agree with you there. It's, it's, it's not as a big deal anymore. Um, what about, uh, what about duplex load? So you see a lot, you know, Federal's making one, it's the eights, tens, the seven, nines. So uh, have you seen anything from a pattern perspective to say that's I good? Hating, yeah. I grew up hating duplex, triplex and all that stuff till this new wave. Uh, Mike Blinn, Mike Blinn and TSS has changed that. Yeah, I, it used to be, you know, like uh, you'd see the old four by six duplex load, blah, blah, blah. Well, basically uh, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't what it was meant out to be, you know? And when uh, Heavy Shot come out with the Mag Blinn part of it, well, that, you know, Heavy Shot's not really just little round circles anyway. It's a little, little different blend. So the five, six, seven blend was, was really, really good. And then the duplex, when we played with the TSS side of it, and actually the load that I, I was shooting all the time when I was building my own do it was, was, uh, uh, the seven, eight, nine load. And, uh, and man, I was finding it, it, it was fantastic. It kind of offset each other. It, it, they, they're actually doing great with them. Uh, so yeah, th those duplex loads and triplex loads are actually working pretty good. Now, 10 years ago, I'd say, nah, stay, you know, stay away from it. And what's, what's the, uh, I guess, what's the advantage of, of having multiple shot sizes in, in one, you know, in one load? I, I don't think you necessarily have to. 
I mean, uh, quite quite frankly, I, you know, I'm me personally, I'm shooting straight nines. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that's it. Um, some guys like to think uh, that you know if they're shooting seven, eight, nine, and I was that guy too, uh, to the point where uh, you had some really long, just hard, hard kills with the the seven TSS. But then when you go like to straight straight seven TSS, it don't seem to pattern as good, you know, and it, it, and it don't. Um, and like with TSS, you're breaking bones anyway, and nine's going to break it. It's not going to flatten out. It's breaking it anyway. So um, the the <laughs> The guys with the like the seven eight nine, that's also one of those that uh, you really you might pull that shot at seventy five yards, and and I'll be honest with you, and you're probably gonna kill it. But uh, we're not recommending that. But I, yeah. I do get it, and I, I do see it because the large shot helps. And and sometimes with that, the you know a seven eight nine load, for example, on TSS, the nine's kind of a buffer, if you would, into it. It just kind of like. Uh, you know, it's like having a crate of eggs and pouring sand on it. When you shake it, it didn't move as much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. So we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to, I got one more question here, but remember uh, we're going to post a link in, in the chat or in the chat here uh, for, if you want to sign up for the giveaway, um, be sure to click that. Uh, last question here before we have to sign off. Um, so one question is with this TSS, relatively new. It's been around for a, while, a little while now, but people, a lot of questions about people being nervous about shooting. Uh, you know, if you read on those choke tubes, it says, you know, it'll say lead only. Yeah. Um, you know, what what choke can you, I mean, shooting I'm TSS? Ours, yeah. ours don't say that. <laughs> Shoot away. Um, yeah. That's just it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's uh, we have seen, and, and like I said, we're not here to bash anybody or anything. And we're kind of thankful for some of those guys and uh, because they do weld in. You know, if you shoot, um, the worst probably is just steel, the old steel duck loads. And you got, especially the guys who still shoot, and I've still got buddies that do it. They're shooting three and a half inch twos or BBs, and they're shooting three or four cases or more every year. They're duck hunting every single day. And you will see that eventually they start – that your barrels and your chokes and stuff are going to swell, even with your um, stainless steel, you know, all, all of ours is um, top notch on that stuff. And there a lot of them are, but there's a lot of these chokes and we're seeing a bunch of them as of late where they're just welding them in. And so, uh, which is great because we can cut them out for you without having to take your barrel. We ruin their choking. So a lot of times, I mean, just by one of ours, but at, at that same point, uh, I would suggest that, especially after duck season, after this, I always pull your choke out uh, just to make sure it screws out and screws in. If it starts getting real tight, then you're probably getting some kind of swell to it. And it's time to call whoever it was, because more likely if it, if it was one of ours, uh, we're probably going to say, hey, send it to you. We're going to get you another one. Uh, we don't want it welded into your gun. But that does happen, and it does happen to everybody. I mean, every, everybody's on that by shooting some of this. TSS, uh, to be honest with you, Early on, that was a problem, but I, I don't see TSS doing it as bad as, you know, just steel duck loads. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be yeah. honest, we'll see more of it during duck season we do turkey. So, so you're shooting, you know, if somebody just wants to shoot out of a factory full, no problem shooting TSS out of a factory full. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, you would say, no, it's terrible. No, yeah, you can not it. Uh, the same thing, at that same point, just uh, unscrew it every, one, every so often just to make sure that it's not welded in there. It's not going to do it on one shot. Yeah. Just got so some really mud with it. Down really, then. really will. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, just, just before we wrap up here, um, if you are an Onyx Elite member, um, you can go, go on to our Elite Benefits page. Um, you get 10% off all performance work as well as uh, – chokes cocking handles etc so um that's just again rob thank you for that that great partnership and thank you for for coming on and e explaining uh everything that they're patterning sure appreciate it uh, you guys are absolutely awesome i told I've, I've told people i said even if you're not a hunter onyx has been really good uh i played with i bought 60 acres of land that was close to me that was absolutely had everything just because i was playing on onyx and found it you know what i mean so it's it, it's it's great so yeah we're we're proud to be uh partners with you guys on this stuff so it's it's fantastic awesome well again uh, everyone who was able to jump on and join us tonight we hope you enjoyed it um 
good luck turkey hunting. It's it's around the corner. We got a week and some in Florida, so um, it's here. I know everyone's fired up. So uh, have a safe season and I hope it's successful. Well, thank you and, and look forward to doing it again. Yep. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.